Mr. President, I um, found a uh, hidden signal hidden inside um, our own uh, satellite system. What are you saying, Dr. Goldblum? I'm saying they're using our own satellites against us. And the clock is ticking. Get me? They're here. What do they want? To destroy all humans. This is Destroy All Humans for the Nintendo Switch, a game I wanted to play when it was advertised during the GameCube era, but didn't get to play since it wasn't released on the GameCube. Well, thanks to this Switch remaster, I can finally play this wacky game. Now, going beyond what the commercial on the game title says, the story starts with an alien named Crypto-136 crash lands in 1950s America and is captured by the military. Playing as Crypto-137, or Crypto for short, you're tasked with flying down to Earth to retrieve your fallen comrade and cause as much destruction to the human population as possible. It surprised me as I played that there was actually more story here involving a shady government agency which kept things interesting beyond the initial plot of playing as aliens invading Earth. I also loved how the humans are all portrayed as dumb, cartoony caricatures of 1950s Americans. With how they use period accurate slang as you read their low IQ thoughts and hear them blame everything on communism. You want to know what's been going on around here? I'll tell you what's been going on around here. Communism, that's what! Communists! We're under attack! <laughs> Unlike Stubbs the Zombie on the Switch, this is an actual remaster, but not quite a remake. So while you can see the 2005 visual style presence, the developers at Black Forest Games made a real effort to improve upon Pandemic Studios' original work. The characters and environments noticeably have more polish to them, a lot of rough, blocky edges have been smoothed out, and the lighting effects are cleaner and more pronounced, even though occasionally some character textures get blurry during cutscenes for some reason. Aside from a few rare instances of slowdown when a lot of chaos happened, the frame rate also runs smoother too. But even without the improved graphics, the art style adds to the game's character to help it stand out. It helps you accept that this is an artificial, unrealistic world where anything can happen, the army has tech that's far more advanced than what we actually had in the 50s, and a lot of people speak in nonsensical phrases. Which brings me to the sound design. The sound effects are great, although the sci-fi sounds have much more impact than the human rifle sounds. The music is also good, with the more memorable tracks being the ones that use those stereotypical alien tunes. The best part is the voice acting, though. The humans are hilarious in their dialogue, which makes all the action even more entertaining. Nobody tosses a cop! And the cutscene interactions between Crypto and his boss Orthopox with their over-exaggerated character voices is equally as entertaining. It's like listening to Saturday morning cartoon villains from the 1970s bantering with each other while an invasion is in progress. Of course, the main draw to playing this game is causing tons of destruction with the different guns at Crypto's disposal. You start off with this electric zap blaster, but soon you gain the ability to burn your foes, blow them up with a sci-fi grenade launcher, even... Uh, pro people. Ew. That's gotta be the worst way to go. Aside from your many guns, Crypto also has telekinetic power simply called PK that he can use to levitate objects and people then throw them around. I actually had more fun with this ability than I initially expected, especially because several levels in the game offer bonus points if you kill agents, cops, or soldiers by throwing them into a lake, or throwing explosive barrels at them, or even throwing them into each other. It's also useful for intercepting rockets and grenades, then throwing them back, and that part saved me quite a few times on the harder parts when I was being overwhelmed by armed humans. There are also stealth sections throughout the game where you sneak around by disguising yourself as a human. This is mainly needed when you have to get into a restricted area undetected or not raise any alarms because an important target will run off if alerted. While the stealth sections are entertaining and help to keep things mixed up and fresh, I had a few problems with them. First of all, there are a lot of them, especially in the middle missions. And in order to maintain your holographic disguise, you have to frequently scan the minds of nearby humans. Now, some parts like the devices and the people that compromise your disguise are fair challenges, but the constant need to scan people to keep your disguise feels tedious. And in all these required stealth sections, you can fail the whole mission if you're discovered. I just think that a game called Destroy All Humans could have used less strict stealth segments. But we do get another thrilling mode of gameplay in the form of destroying a level with your flying saucer. The saucer is a bit awkward to control at first, but with the weapons, it makes the fun of destroying things grow to epic levels. The effects of roads on fire and buildings exploding like something out of a Michael Bay movie make this even more exciting. Even with the amusement of destruction being a great incentive to play this game, be warned that it's also surprisingly challenging. 
With later stealth sections, there are more devices to mess up your disguise, and the enemies later in the game throw a lot of bad guys at you with a lot of guns, explosives, and tanks. But that challenge incentivizes you to accomplish the bonuses for more DNA that you then use to upgrade all your guns, abilities, and your saucer. Eventually you come to a point where a few of the levels are easier with the upgrades, but it takes a while to get to those kinds of upgrades. Plus, sometimes you just want to cause chaos without worrying about time limits or getting shot dead. In addition to upgrades, this Switch version also has immediate access to a large closet of crypto skins. Just something else to add to the character of the game, and honestly, I think blowing stuff up as a clown alien is... It's just the best. Anything to char that neat nice You've just been erased. This game is a semi-open world game, a term you've probably heard before. What I mean with it is each level is its own self-contained open world similar to the maps in Simpsons Hit and Run. So even though you get waypoints, you're still able to traverse the level how you like to reach your goal and grab bonus collectibles along the way. But for that true free-roaming semi-open world experience, you can return to a map with the explore button to find any collectibles you missed and mess with the pathetic humans your way at your own pace. But each map also has four challenge modes for you to do with the goal always being to get the highest score possible. They're all simple to explain. Race is where you chase a rogue drone and catch as much of the following data bits as you can. This involves using a lot of your dash and platforming with the help of your jetpack. Abduction is what you think it is. Grab people, or cows depending on the world, and throw as many of them as possible into the saucer abduction beam until it reaches the end. Like I said, using the PK for throwing is awesome, so I have a lot of fun with this. Armageddon is when you hop into your saucer and blow up as much of the world as you can within a time limit, which I found out was more difficult than it sounds because the game wants you to rack up a lot of points in a short amount of time before you get any stars. Finally, there's my favorite mode, Rampage. A mode where you're bombarded by armed humans and you have to kill as many of them as you can and of course not get killed yourself. It's a fantastic mode if you want to focus on just a crazy on-foot combat with an arcade flair to it. The game is available for $40, which is a decent price for what it offers. It's a great game for venting out frustrations or just having a good laugh while you enjoy the skill testing challenge. Well, that's my review of Destroy All Humans for the Nintendo Switch. If you liked this review, check out my previous reviews of these other similar titles on the Switch. Saints Row 4, and Stubbs the Zombie Rebel Without a Pulse. See you all next time! Ah, you scattered them like roaches! Marvelous!